We try, and mostly we fail, to lose those pounds that have left some 7 in 10 Americans overweight. But as you've seen in all those TV commercials, including on this network, there's a new class of drugs that could be a game changer. Susan Spencer looks into the pros and cons. What goes through your mind when you see yourself at that weight? It's a totally different person. 44-year-old Laquita Clark says memories of being overweight and ridiculed go back to middle school. I remember sitting on the school steps with a group of my friends and just a group of other kids walking by just, oh my God, you're so fat. Ooh. <laughs> it, it was very hurtful. That was my heaviest weight, about 250 pounds. Over the years, Clark, a nurse in Nashville, Tennessee, tried everything from fad dieting to kickboxing. Nothing worked. It was almost like, like torture because of that relationship that I had with the food. It's like, these are things that I love. I'm eating things that I love, and um, it's giving me comfort at the moment. So why, why change that? There's one dose in each package? Actually, this is a month's worth. Okay. But last June, everything changed. So what you do is you open it up. When diagnosed as pre-diabetic, she was prescribed Ozempic. With one small injection a week, her health improved, and something else happened, too. When were you at your heaviest? What were you? And how much weight have you actually lost since starting this drug? The heaviest weight that I've been is 250 pounds. Right now, I'm at 164. That's life-changing. Tell me in a nutshell, how do these drugs work? So these drugs are in a class of medicines that signal fullness to the brain and regulate blood sugar. Dr. Rekha Kumar is chief medical officer at Found. The reality is, is that people don't fail diets. Diets fail people. That's the weight loss app that Laquita Clark uses to receive her care and to get her Ozempic. So if I'm taking one of these drugs, I will know when it's time to stop eating or what? So it's really amazing to see it when it works and people will say that it's the first time they felt normal or it's the first time they felt full. Wow. An obesity specialist, she helped oversee early trials of GLP-1 medications. GLP-1s include Ozempic, oh, 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 Ozempic. and Monjaro, used for diabetes, Wigovi helped and Wagovi and Zepbound approved for weight loss. On average, people lose 10 to 20 percent of their body weight in the first year. For many of the roughly 74 percent of Americans who are overweight or obese, that is almost unimaginable. This is a scientific breakthrough, and not just because of weight control, but because of cardiovascular risk reduction, mm -hmm. treating diabetes, people are actually getting healthier. And, and that's the point of medicine. It isn't just to be thinner. But clearly being thinner is what's causing all the buzz. It's all over social media. People are documenting their journeys. They're injecting on Instagram, showing other people how to do it. Doesn't this concern you? Definitely, a lot of it concerns me. I saw What's most today, concerning? That, we're seeing people want to get a hold of these medicines that don't need them at all. People trying to fit into dresses and wanting to lose the vanity weight, and that's not really what these were made for. What are some of the most unusual places that you've heard of people being able to get these drugs? The hair salon. Oh, come on. Yeah, one of my colleagues forwarded me an email from her hair salon basically saying, like, come get a blow dry and get your Ozempic. But the hair salon isn't the only place where drugs like Ozempic are making an impression. This is certainly not escaped Wall Street's attention. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Simeon Siegel is a senior analyst at BMO Capital Markets. He says GLP-1 drugs could be a gold mine for investors. In terms of one product that had the potential to affect this many industries, have you ever seen anything like this? Well, so, so I don't know the numbers, but I wonder if the iPhone. The iPhone? Do you think this could have as big an impact as the iPhone? Well, if it hits 40% of the people. If, if at the end of the day, if this becomes something that is as widely accessible as the conversations can bring it to, it should have a very large impact. With people thinner, he envisions a ripple effect, 
a potential boom in athleisure wear, even in gym memberships. It's sort of intuitive that Ozempic might be the death knell for gyms. Who needs a gym? My hypothesis with anecdotal evidence is when someone who hasn't been fit becomes fit, starts becoming fit, they change their life to make sure they're protecting and truly being fit. And so instead of canceling the gym membership, they would tend sign to up. sign up. Yeah. He says analysts even blew sky about a big boost for the airlines, since lighter passengers could mean lower costs. But all this depends on the drugs being widely available, which currently is far from a given. So the biggest problem with these medicines right now is access. And there are people paying out of pocket. That How much? Sometimes up to $1,200 a month. So right now we're seeing maybe 30% of the time we're seeing coverage of these medicines, which is quite low, considering mm -hmm. we said 70% of the population might qualify. Yeah, it used to be that, what was the saying? You can't be too rich or too thin. Now you can't be thin without being rich. <laughs> it seems that way. Beyond cost, there's the issue of side effects, like an upset stomach, sometimes severe. But the big lingering question about GLP-1s, what do we know about the long-term effects of it? So I think that's a concern that we don't have 100 years of data. We have 20 years of data. If taken purely for weight loss, how long do you have to take it? Uh, we don't know. Um, that's what do you of, mean we don't know? We don't know. So that's one of the active research questions that's going on around this class of medication right now is what happens when you stop? Um, we think that people tend to regain weight. But that is not Dr. Mara Gordon's main concern. Health is so much more complicated than the number on the scale. Rather, she worries these drugs feed a serious prejudice in our society. The problem is fat phobia. Right? The problem is a culture that discriminates against people based on body size. This is a really serious moral issue that our culture is facing, and Ozempic is absolutely part of that. I may have shared this with some of you guys. It's Dr. Gordon is an assistant that, professor at Cooper Medical School of Rowan University in Camden, New Jersey. She calls herself a body positive doctor. Basically, I don't bring up my patient's weight unless they want to. But you have no qualms about prescribing Ozempic or one of these drugs in cases where their health really is at stake. In patients who have diabetes, medications like Ozempic can really help them. It can help improve their blood sugar, can help protect their heart. I think society is stuck on what your body looks like, not so much concerned about the inside or your health. And though she is quite happy with what her body looks like now, Laquita Clark says feeling better on the inside is the most important part. If that involves taking medication, so be it. My focus and my goal is being healthy and being around for some years to see my children and my grandchildren grow up. So I, I don't care about what society thinks or what people are saying about it.